<laughs> Brian. What's up? Man? What's up, dude? I got Brian Turner on the podcast today, a uh, fellow Volkswagen enthusiast, Euro enthusiast, um, and creator of the Cross Hall Cruise. So thanks for being on the podcast, man. So I'm super stoked to talk to yeah. you. Yeah. Likewise. So I just like usually start these things out, just dig straight into, you know, your Volkswagen history, your Euro history. Like, how did you get into two Volkswagens? Uh, well, I kind of started out as a car guy in general, I guess. As a little kid, my dad would point out muscle cars, uh, nice. you know, you know, what year a Camaro is that? You can tell this car is, you know, that specific year by the taillights or, you know, this trim, this, that, and the other. Nice. So that kind of got me the, the car bug. Um, but, you know, I, uh, I've always had a, a thing for the Euro cars. Uh, I don't know what it is, but, you know, the, you know, whale tail 911 was like my favorite car. Nice. So, yes. One of mine uh, as well. I just saw one on the, on the parkway the other day, old guy driving yeah. it had to have been like 78 years old. And it nice. was, it was like the cleanest. I was like, Oh my gosh, look at this guy. Yeah. I, I really wish that I would have like bit the bullet when I was in my early twenties and just bought one when they were like 15 grand instead of 80. Yeah. So that and that, all the E thirties. <laughs> well, I had one of those. Uh, I bought that one for seven thousand and sold oh, it for twelve man. yeah dude three years later but that's rare uh, to do with the car nowadays <laughs> yeah but actually not oh. really i was talking about this with the buddy and like anything 80s like late 70s 80s or 90s like that all that stuff starting to catch fire it like almost doesn't so, matter what it is if it was so a crazy cool, yeah if it was like a cool retro car or if it's like any has any type of motorsport aspect to it at all it just like those cars are just like skyrocketing in value yeah 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 i i sold it with these crazy like fancy recovered recaros like diamond stitching and all this stuff mm. and uh that i added an extra two thousand bucks onto that and now i'm like those seats like i didn't really look at the the market value of recaros because they you know recaro grays are always like yeah, 500 bucks. dime a dozen. And now people want a thousand bucks for them, and I'm looking yeah. at my seats. I'm like, they were probably like thirty five hundred dollars seats. Mm -hmm. Yeah, dude, and, that's uh, another thing. That's the those Recaros, like those old retro Recaros, are going for even the cloth. <laughs> the cloth yeah. is going for not even that's the insane. seats, just the fabric. <laughs> but I crazy. sold the E30 right at the beginning of all this pandemic stuff, mm. and the values of those things have just gone up even more like yeah. that i probably left a couple thousand dollars on the table just because i sold it a couple months too early yeah no but, i saw that thing on your instagram that thing looks super clean too like super clean yeah what was the color of the, that gray i was always a, an that awesome was a uh, lock silver lock silver that's a great that's a great color yeah. so how did what was yeah. your first volkswagen like how did you get into the volkswagens uh so like my, well, when I was looking for cars for my first car, I was looking at like BMW 2002s, mm -hmm. uh, Jettas, you know, pretty much anything Euro, just cause that was kind of my thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I found a 86 Jetta GL. Nice. It was silver as well. Um, you know, nothing, nothing fancy. It had some like prime wheels on it which <laughs> nice. now people would probably love but i didn't particularly care for them but uh you know i had that for about a year and then uh i was saving for like a, a motor build and i'm like you know it's a 86 jetta eight valve i could buy you know a, one with a 16 valve mm -hmm. so that's what i did i found a 1990 uh jetta uh GLI with a two nice. liter 16 valve in it. Nice. And I had that <clears throat> through the tail end of my high school career. Awesome. And uh, I had that for, I don't know, nine months or a year. I was cruising through downtown Portland with some buddies, like four deep in it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and uh, cruising through uh, Portland, got on Burnside and got uh, 
sideswiped by some uh, older guy. No. Went spinning through the intersection. Back oh. bumper shot off. Everybody got out. <clears throat> Had to hold my buddy back from, you know. Ah, oh, killing somebody. Putting a hurt on this guy. <laughs> <laughs> he was like a 60-year-old dude. Oh, like, man. All right, let's not, let's not be those guys. Yeah. So proceed to try to shove my bumper back in the back of the car in my buddy's lap driving we got like i don't know three four blocks down the road and i'm like i look in the river mirror and it's all i see is bumper i don't even see my friends i'm like all right that's kind of messed up you know we're all just in a pretty serious accident dude one of my buddies broke ribs and oh man all this stuff oh shit what was the uh, other what was the other guy driving that hit you guys do you remember it was like a Sebring or like a K car or something. So like a straight up old man in a straight up old man car. Yeah, he was like a sixty some odd year old. You know, he was a TriMet bus driver, and he was trying to like say that's my bumper, and I'm like, dude, no, no, it's not. (laughs) (laughs) He didn't. My bumper. He couldn't tell the difference between a Mark II GLI rear bumper and his Sebring front bumper. (laughs) Yeah, dude, that's crazy. Yeah, passable, (laughs) right? Oh man! All right, but, so, uh, I, I, yeah. so you're cruising. The homie's got the bumper in the back seat. Yeah, so we pull into a parking lot and huck it into a dumpster, and then uh, I finish driving home. And it's you know, it, I got tagged in the back passenger door, mm. so like my steering wheel is just like totally crooked, like oh. driving all you know crazy. Dude. I get home, put it in the driveway go to bed and then you know i was living at home because i'm 18 at the time mm-hmm. and my dad like barges in he's like dude what the hell happened to your oh, car i'm like geez. oh uh we were cruising downtown and i got hit <laughs> so <clears throat> you, yeah do you toss he the to you, you just toss the bumper in the garbage can what does a mark ii oem gli bumper go for nowadays like nowadays <laughs> It's like up. Uh, I've been so far removed from Mark II stuff anymore. I'd probably a couple hundred bucks, I'd imagine. But. Don't need that. Yeet. That's crazy. So dad sees it wrecked. It's totaled at that point, right? Did you salvage it yeah. or save it or anything? Yeah. Else? Uh, yeah. Uh, so the crappy thing was I had uh, liability insurance, mm. and it was my word versus the other guy, and apparently the three witnesses that are my friends are tainted witnesses so even with the broken ribs (laughs) yeah uh so i mean they got you know their medical stuff paid for but uh i didn't get shit for that car damn dude we stuck the car on the side of my parents house and the search began for another car Mm -hmm. um i found a 89 jetta not even a gl just like super basic found that for couple hundred bucks not running mm-hmm. turned out i had a cracked spark plug that kept it from running oh. so two dollars later we're yeah. back in action and uh drove that for like three months and then i found my uh <clears throat> 89 gti 16 valve nice that i had for many many years so you had a mark ii you were in a mark ii fever back then that's like four Mark IIs in yeah. a row. Three three Mark II Jettas and then a GTI. Yep. Sick. Yeah. So that's, how I about mean, about how old were you when you got into the GTI? The GTI I was I think still eighteen. Hmm. Okay. And uh yeah, Mark IIs were kinda always my thing. I mean, granted that was the last one that I had. I didn't have any more after that, but I had that one for 12 years. Man, so. that one looked pretty. That one looks super sick, dude. Uh, black. I'm trying to find some yeah. pictures <clears> of <throat> here. Renault LSs. Nice. Uh, went through the the big bumper phase like everybody did back in 2004 or mm-hmm. five. The picture I see, then, it's got small bumpers. Did you? Well, yeah. The the big bumper thing was short lived. Ah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> when I had moved out, uh, I took my bumper off on my driveway a handful of times, and 
I was like, you know what? I'm kind of over this, and I found some Euro small bumpers, mm-hmm. uh, and put those on. I mean, it was a small bumper car to begin with. Mm. Uh, it was an '89, so it was small bumper, big doors. You know, had power windows, heated mirrors that I didn't know that those came with, which was kind of cool. Sick. Um, you know, I had all the all the cool options. Um, Are those rally headlights? What lights do you have on those? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sick. Yeah, I went through. You know, they had arrows at first, and then I went the single rounds, and then. I did rallies after that. Dude, those are sick. <clears throat> those are worth a pretty penny nowadays. Yeah, I got a stupid good deal on those, too. Some guy, like, his wife backed into his car, and it cracked one of the tabs, and I got it for 440 bucks. Nice. And then I had my buddy fix the, the tab and then shave the um, the core support and respray the grill because it was all rock chips. It was all minty. Mm-hmm. Um, it looks super minty in the the picture I'm looking at. What was the, did you have anything done to the interior? Uh, no, just Recaro grays out of the Jetta, and mm. then uh, I pretty much gutted the back end of it. I did a false floor, so it was all flat. Nice. I hid my amp under that, and then had like a little ten inch sub that I kind of tucked off to the side, and then uh, it was kind of like a I was trying to do like a a show race kind of build with it Mm. at that time and then uh i was kind of like trying to like make it like entirely too nice uh Mm. the my goals for that car were very unrealistic especially (laughs) for someone that young i mean the picture i saw with the rally lights small bumpers what you had that lip on it i always forget what that that's uh, just the factory 16 valve. Was a 16 valve lip. It looked yeah. really, really clean, dude. With the Renault uh, wheels, like it looked actually. I mean, that was a very, very good looking Mark II. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, it was clean. Um, and then I started doing bodywork, getting it ready for paint. Uh, I had acquired uh, a Porsche 944 drivetrain that I wanted to swap in and make it rural drive and do Shit. all sorts of crazy stuff to it. <laughs> that's where we started getting a little crazy. Yeah, and that's where the, <laughs> the project kind of just, like, it sat. Like, I never cut the car up or anything, mm-hmm. but, like, I was just, like, trying to research how to do it because I don't know if you remember, there was a, a, a blue and white Mark II back in the day up in Washington called the Vorsha. Hmm. And it had a Porsche 944 drivetrain, like engine, drivetrain, everything. Damn. Was it and a turbo? I vaguely remember. I don't remember that car. That? Was it a turbo? Was it a 944 no. turbo? Or was it? Okay. I don't remember that car. No. It was, I think it was just a regular. I know those 944s were. it was were... just an 8-valve yeah. 944 engine yeah. or 928 or 24. Those are, those are CIS, though, so I would have been like, no, no, thank you. <laughs> right? Yeah. Those I, are CIS. I don't remember. I don't think it used the stock engine management, mm-hmm. but um, yeah, I thought I remember seeing a build thread of like it just like bolted up, oh, and then damn. I was like looking at it. I'm like, I don't think it just bolts up. <laughs> um, but it was like the perfect length and everything. Mm-hmm. And then, so that kind of sat <clears throat> with you know that project sat. But I mean, I still continue to do stuff to the car. Mm-hmm. Um, 12 years is I, a pretty long time so yeah man, yeah had different that. i had different recars in it at the end i had uh, a model c and a lx they were like nice. i had the fishnet headrest yeah the headrest nice um and That's then a... uh like a nardi personal wheel uh nice. nathel uh carbon fiber dash trim suspension what uh, were you running as far as suspension because it looked pretty not l- not low, uh, not low, 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 but it, it looked good. Yeah, it was a Paytech hole shots. Mm. Um, they were like an offshoot of Bill Scene, I guess. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Um, they're all right. And then I had uh, KWV2s on it at the end. Rad. <clears throat> awesome. Yeah, that car had like a, a definite like KWV2 stance. It was definitely wasn't perch pulled race lens. <laughs> no, no, I, I, uh, 
I shun that kind of stuff. Um, <laughs> we'll get into that yeah. and do a game we'll play later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. you had the Mark yeah, II. I, I think, I mean, 12 years, that took you into your 30s, right? Like uh, Right right up to it, yeah. Nice. So what did you get into yeah. after? And what happened with the Mark II? Did you end up selling it? or? Uh, well, <clears throat> so I, I had that car. I just kept acquiring parts for it. I had half-inch pop-outs that were on it. Nice. Um, I had Rally Golf door cards. Um, and then it kind of kind of sat. I uh, I'd moved into a, an apartment, so I kind of just chilled out at my parents' house mm -hmm. until I had room. And during that time, I was also building a Mark III uh, GTI VR6. Nice. Went through all that. Uh, basically rebuilt the engine um cams crazy expensive s2 metalworks header oh, um three inch exhaust hella all red zero hatch Oof. you name it all the fancy euro crap that you can't find for mark threes i had I it and, i'm like uh, obsessed with mark threes right now i had a mark three yeah. a windsor blue mark three about a year ago um and sold it and i think that's like one of the only car and there's a handful of cars i've had a lot of I've had a lot of volkswagens over the years but that's one i really regret it's weird i like well i was like got a mark threes and then i found out like how hard and rare a lot of the stuff is for mark threes now and i was like ah, oh, well you know i want to dump all this money into this project um sold it and now i was like man i wish i, I really wish i kept that car yeah, I never even really got to drive that car. It's a sad thing. Oh, dude, you just like picked it up as a project, <laughs> started working on it, and then dumped it before. Yeah, yeah. My my ex at the time, she had a, a Mark III four door VR6. Um, nice. And that was pretty cool, but I hated those seats. Mm. They're just like super hard, mm -hmm. uncomfortable, which is where those Recaros came from. So I had my buddy Ron Allen up in in uh, Seattle. He was doing Recaro recoverings at the time, mm -hmm. and he had just started his business. And I was like, "Hey, man, I want to get a pair of seats." So I got a pair of seats from him. Nice. And uh, so I got those in there. And like, <clears throat> you know, like I said, I was in the apartment. I was like, "Apartment limit sucks." <laughs> so I need to buy a house. So the Mark III project was snowballing wildly out of control. Mm. So I basically, I took the engine out of that, mm -hmm. kept it, parted the engine stuff out of the Mark II mm -hmm. and kept the shell. And I was going to just combine them at the end, nice. even though anyone that knew me back then, I was the biggest VR6 hater <laughs> out there because I love my 16 valve. Um, so... But, I mean, I had tons of money into this VR that I hadn't even used yet. Mm -hmm. so, so you're going to stab that into the Mark II. Yeah. And then, uh, so I uh, parted the Mark III out, bought my house that I'm living in now. Nice. And that was back in 2012. <clears throat> well, that's, and, a, that's uh, a good financial decision. <laughs> yeah. It's like Sold the Mark III to buy a house. And over you, double double in price so it's a pretty good come up yeah <clears throat> and you kept the vr did the vr end up ever going into the mark ii uh no it didn't <laughs> uh my uh my roommate that i had shortly after uh buying this place uh he had a, a ginster uh nice yellow mark three uh, that's my uh, favorite GTI. and he was edition? wanting to build his motor and i'm like dude i got this motor uh, mm -hmm. I'll sell it to you for sixteen hundred bucks plus mm -hmm. your motor. So I just we swapped it in in a weekend, and Rad. then he was off and running and put all my all my parts in it, and that thing ripped. It was fun. Nice, dude. So in a way, I kind of got to enjoy the Mark mm. III, but it's not someone else's mine. car. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, that's rad. So what ended up happening with the Mark II GTI then? Did you ever rip the 16 valve? It just sat here in the garage for a while. Mm. Um, then uh, 
when I bought the house, I had a, I had some extra money because mm-hmm. they're like, oh, you only need three percent, and I had like, I don't know, five or, I don't know, five or ten percent or something like that. So mm-hmm. I had like five grand burning a hole in my pocket. Nice. And I found an Audi Coupe Quattro on Craigslist. Oh. And I'm like, oh, those are cool. <clears throat> yes, ultra cool. And I went and looked at it, and uh, picked that up for. I don't know, sixteen hundred bucks or something like that. Nice. And then uh Coupe had that Quattro for, for sixteen hundred dollars. Yeah. That's freaking awesome. Yeah, I was it was a initially gonna be a flip car, got mm-hmm. it, cleaned it up, and then at the time, not that many people cared. So mm. I ended up keeping it and did some stuff to it. I did K- KW coils on that. Sick. Rewrap the headliner, uh, repainted a bunch of stuff on it. Um, <clears throat> then I started piecing together a 07K swap for that. Nice. And uh, had about 90% of the stuff because uh, Hank Iroz was doing a bunch of swap parts at the time. Mm-hmm. And I had most of the swap parts. And then the RS3s came out. And. Uh, he kind of abandoned the swap market, understandably mm-hmm. so, because there's way more money in RS3s than yeah. there is old Audis that they only made <laughs> 1,700 of. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, <clears throat> at the time, I thought it was kind of up shit creek with no paddle, and mm-hmm. uh, I had already yarded the, the engine out of it. So, I was kind of toying with the idea of selling it, when I got offered money and ultimately ended up selling it for mm. 4500 bucks with everything that I had. Whoa, dude. That was a good, <clears throat> that was a good come up. Yeah, I mean, it, it probably broke even with what I had because uh. I gave them the engine, the S4 trans, all the mounts and everything. Okay. And I had Euro bumpers for that as well. Compliments to some uninsured guy backing into my car in Portland. <laughs> Portland, uh, dude. What is up with Portland yeah. drivers, man? <laughs> Stay away. Stay away. <clears throat> uh, that's hilarious. Well, it's not hilarious, yeah. but it is hilarious. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, the bumpers got shipped to my neighbor's house. So, like, thankfully my neighbors are cool. Nice. They're probably They're like, like, hey, man, the these, are these, bumpers these doing probably belong to you. My doorstep? You're the guy with all the obscure, like, European cars, so these probably belong to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what happened. They're like, ah, I'm pretty sure these are yours. <laughs> it happens with my neighbor sometimes. We'll get something, and he's like, yeah, I'm pretty sure this is yours. It's like car parts or whatever. It's pretty funny. Yeah. So the Audi Coupe Quattro, did you get back into a Volkswagen after that? Uh, so after that, what did I have? I had... Ah, oh, crap. I had so many cars, I forget. I had, uh, <laughs> I think at the time I had my first Mark VI. Nice. Uh, 2010 uh, Mark VI GTI. Okay. And then uh, I did, just, just did the standard wheels, coils, tune, mm-hmm. you know, stage two stuff. Mm-hmm. And then I took that to Woost in Denver when my brother lived in Denver, did some road trips and stuff, and then nice. uh, ended up getting my first Mark VI Gulf R. The first like, one, right so that was, my... that was the white one, right? Yep. Sweet. Yeah, I bought that right after my 30th birthday. Nice. A gift to myself. Awesome. Dude, my Mark IV R32 was my, I think it was my 21st or 22nd birthday gift to myself. Maybe even 23rd. I don't know. I know it was like around my birthday. I was like, sick. Car for me. <laughs> yeah. Those are sweet. Dude, so. Uh, I've bought those a few times. <clears throat> Mark 6 Golf R, your first one, because there's, uh, there's another one sitting behind you right now. So what was the story with the first Golf R, and then how do you go from one Mark 6 Golf R to a second Mark 6 Golf R? Because most people would think, hey, one Mark Six Golf R <laughs> is probably good enough. Um, well, the first one had a uh, 
a kind of a curse on it. Mm, it was a white so. car. Greg yeah. Greg Zorn of CKW2 thinks that white Volkswagens are cursed. I tend to agree. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I had that, you know, swapped a lot of the mods that would swap over from the GTI onto the R, so I mm -hmm. got the coils, tails, all that stuff. Nice. Onto that. Um, you know, did all the same <clears throat> same mods. Um and then uh, the coils, I had, the coils swapped over. The coils swapped over, yeah. even though the GTI was front wheel drive and the the Golf R was all wheel drive. Mm -hmm. nice. Suspension's the same. I think Sweet. spring rates are technically different, but mm. it all swaps. Okay, because I know the Mark but, Four uh, Mark Four stuff was different. Yeah, those are totally different. Yeah. But okay, cool. The Mark Five and up, pretty much. Well. Sevens are different, but mm -hmm. fives and sixes, Passats, all that stuff are pretty much all the same, Rad. except for Mark Six Jettas are different. Okay, but <clears throat> they pretty much all swap. Sweet. So you got all the stuff from the GTI Mark Six GTI swapped over to the Golf R. Yep. Um, and then, uh, like around uh, Halloween. So a few months later, mm -hmm. um, someone kicked my door in. Oh, um, was it in Portland? My front. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, I want to say it was my former roommate's uh, girlfriend. Oh. They had just moved out, and her and I did not get along. Mm. And I kind of told her how I felt about her. Ah. So. Uh, so yeah, I think it was her, but it's Damn. whatever. <clears throat> um, but so that happened and then I was cruising up through Vancouver after that got fixed, was changing lanes and there was a semi-tire retread that was in the middle of the highway oh. and, uh, I was in the middle of changing lanes. So it was either try to make a crazy abrupt move to avoid hitting it and potentially wrecking mm -hmm. or just hit it and that's what i did oh man so I blew my front bumper off or just blew it apart anyways mm -hmm. and blew my back like the center part of around my exhaust that took that off and Ugh. did a bunch of other damage that was like six thousand dollars worth of damage just from that man so was that a situation where they where you had to write the car off is, in, in... No, no, no. Okay. it was never a total loss or anything. Okay, it's just, just bad stuff kept happening to it. Mm, like that got fixed, and like literally after that got fixed, like everything was good, and then, like I'd got super sunburned, and there was like a brand new car wash that had just opened. So I'm like, you know, it's not gonna have, you know, you know all the stuff to scratch my paint like it would n normally otherwise mm -hmm. so i was like i'll make an exception because i really didn't wash my car and mm -hmm. i hurt so let's <laughs> go through no big deal and the guy in front of me stops and does not keep going and it shoves my car under his uh, under his car it's in the car wash in the car wash. in the car and wash. I'm like <laughs> i'm laying on the horn doing everything and it takes the guys running down to, like, oh, tell him what to do to, like, get out of the car wash no. while my car's getting pushed under his. Oh, dude, that and is crazy. I'm like, crazy. dude, are you serious? Like, and then my windshield cracked, and then the people trying to fix my windshield couldn't drive a stick and broke my shifter. Like, <laughs> all this shit. That car was definitely cursed, car. dude. That car dude, was definitely yeah. cursed. And then, so, like, I was trying to get the the shifter fixed or getting the window people to pay to get my shifter fixed mm -hmm. and give them a quote for my buddy's shop and i'm like just gonna fix it myself i'm yeah. like hey maybe i pocket a couple couple dollars yeah fix it myself. stupid cost money window people yeah so so it took him like three months i'm driving this car with this floppy dick shifter <laughs> like I'm like this is ridiculous finally they pay me and it's like, I don't know, a, I had already bought the parts, and mm -hmm. it was like the weekend before Leavenworth Drive. Mm. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to bang this out real quick, mm -hmm. and I'll have a good shifter. And uh, the, the little clips that, like, hold the, the uh, 
shifter cables in place. Mm -hmm. I popped it and it was just gone. I'm like, okay, I'll find <laughs> it later, I guess. So I do everything, fix it, can't find go to try to find it. I can't find it. <laughs> oh, and it's no. the night before Leavenworth at like oh. seven at night. And I'm like, crap, what am I going to do? Dude. I'm like looking around, trying to find something. And I see a beer cap on the ground. Nice. And I'm like, I can make something out of that. <laughs> So I take a hammer and I smash the the beer cap down and then take some tin snips and cut the little horseshoe shape out of nice, it. Nice, dude. Stick it in. I'm like, yes, it works. <laughs> and then... <clears throat> that is Volkswagen head ingenuity right there, dude. Yeah. That is awesome. And then my, my dumb ass is like, if I bring tools, I'm going to need them. So I don't bring tools. <laughs> and everything's good. I make it up there. No problems. I get about 20 miles out of town. My buddies are trying to stop for gas before I head back. Mm -hmm. And, like, I'm going to downshift and it's just, like, all mushy. And I'm like, oh, no. Uh... <laughs> I'm like, oh, crap. So I'm, like, stuck in, like, third gear <laughs> till we get to the, to the gas station. And then I'm, like, asking my buddies. They got, like, F80 M3 brand new b8 s4 mm -hmm. you know they definitely don't all have these tools fancy cars that they don't <laughs> they have definitely have don't I mean, have tools <laughs> granted i mean with a you know golf car you don't necessarily you have needed to, have to roll either, up with but... at least a dude with a mark three or mark two those guys yeah. always have tools yeah and i'm like you guys got tools no and i'm like looking around i'm like shit i'm so screwed oh, i'm man. like four hours from home no tools and my shift cables don't work <laughs> And I look over and I see motorcycles and I'm like, those guys always have a little tool kit mm -hmm. under their seat. Mm -hmm. So I run over, I'm like, Hey guys, you got a tool or a tool bag that I can borrow? And they're like, Oh yeah, I got Sick. a couple, couple screwdrivers. So I run over, grab the screwdrivers. I was able to take my intake off with the screwdrivers. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, I found the, the beer bottle cap sitting on my, my transmission so i oh, popped it back in and i was nice. able to get back home Beer bottle and the guy stayed like, yeah it stayed for like another couple of days until i was able to get the, <laughs> the clip did and you then, end up finding the clip or did you have to go get like another one from the dealer or something i went to the dealer and i bought like three of them nice. <laughs> <laughs> like if that ever happens again i want to know that i have an extra <laughs> oh, that's crazy but the guy was just like, how the hell did you do that? I was like, uh, <laughs> I need three of those. Shit. What? You only need one. I need three. I definitely need three. <laughs> Dude, that's crazy. So I, I'm assuming you were just like, fuck this car. After all that. Yeah, went that, down. Wasn't, that wasn't even the last thing. Oh. Uh, <laughs> so I was driving to work. You know, i usually go to work pretty early mm -hmm. it was foggy there was a car coming uh in the the oncoming lane and there was a ditch on the other side uh -oh. and then like a raccoon or something ran out in front of me uh. and i had to hit it so it like busted but one of the side grills and i was like uh. dude fuck this car and that was the, that was the end of the car i was like i hit up my buddy asked him <laughs> if i could use his lift to take off all my my mods and mm -hmm. swap my stock parts back on Damn. and then i traded that for a, a nissan frontier that i only had for like six months <laughs> you're like fuck this i'm getting a truck <laughs> did you have any other yeah. volkswagens at that time or was the the that golf bar your only VW? that was my only volkswagen mm -hmm. i uh I kind of went Volkswagen list for a little bit. Mm -hmm. I, I had, well, I went through the Frontier and then I went Mark Seven TDI, mm. and then I went to like some big bro dozer Nissan Titan diesel. Nice. And then then I got that. the second Golf R. So you go through all that stuff with the first Golf R, and you're like this fucking thing was cursed. So. How did you make the decision to be like, well, maybe second time's a charm. <laughs> well, let's do this well, again. I really let's run, the car. Let's run it, it just, back. <laughs> there was nothing wrong. Like, it wasn't the car's fault. Mm, yeah. Like, everything about the car I loved. Mm -hmm. It was just, just 
I don't know. It just wasn't meant to be. That car and I did not mix, apparently. <laughs> that one and I, car. And, and I was looking for... Uh, so the, the, the Titan got stolen, so I was like... Oh, shit. <clears throat> had to find another car. Jesus. And, uh, yeah, had some bad luck. Yeah, dude, I but, would say uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so I was trying to look for new cars, and, mm. like, I still had a few parts from the other Golf R. Mm. Like, I had a Mark V R32 battery location kit. Nice. Uh which just swaps in because they're pretty much the same chassis. Mm. And uh, I think that's actually the only part I had left. Mm. So I was like, you know what? I got this part that pretty much nobody else is going to want except for some nerd like me that likes to do all these obscure retrofits. Mm -hmm. So I like, I'll, I'll I run really it back. love the uh, Mark VI Golf R like styling. Like I, Me too. I, I love like the front bumper. Like I, li I think it's like more aggressive than because like the Mark Sevens are sick cars, but it's hard to differentiate them from like a GTI. You know what I mean? Yeah, like if you I don't, I feel like the GTI looks more aggressive than the Golf R. Yeah, if you don't at know, at least in the Sevens, a seven point mm -hmm. five fixed it, and that's a yeah. really good looking car. But yeah, if you don't know what you're looking at, it's like, uh, but the Mark Sixes, you definitely had that like. It reminded me kind of like how the Mark IVs were. Because, like, the Mark V-Rs, and we don't really talk about those, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But we can skip that one. The Mark IV R is, like, you look at a Mark IV R32 versus, like, a GTI or a Golf, a Mark IV GTI or Golf, and you can be like, whoa, there's a huge difference between these two, right? And I feel the same yeah. way about the Mark VI R. And I actually, I've been on the hunt for one for a long time. I got a couple buddies to let you know that, you know, if one pops up for the right price, two-door. Has to be a two-door. I just might have to jump on it, <laughs> but I've 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 loved the Mark Six R's. I definitely it's like a, uh, you know, a car that I, I in my wants list. So and you got you got the dope color too. Is that deep yeah. blue pearl or is that a different variation now with the Mark Sixes? Uh, rising blue. Rising blue. Nice. Sweet. So, um, how does that car come about? Uh, like I said, my uh, my truck got stolen, and I was just kind of looking for cars. wasn't sure what car I wanted to get. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I thought about getting something more expensive, but at the time, uh, my girlfriend was expecting, so I was like, I should probably not go crazy expensive because my, my truck payment at the time was like $800. Dang. It was insane. So I'll probably dial it back a little bit, seeing as I'm – able to just kind of walk into something without mm -hmm. you know negative equity or anything like that so mm -hmm. you know i had the parts laying around for for that for my last one so i <clears throat> i found that one at a, a bmw dealership and it was like a certified car so i was like all right nice we'll get this one dude that is awesome it's pretty clean but it has a few little things that needs to be fixed so but I mean, I've fixed them all since then. Dude, it's super, super clean looking car. And I love CHs. CHs are like my yeah. favorite wheel ever. <laughs> I've had six sets of CHs. Wow. That's how much <laughs> I love them. I like my favorite wheel. Yeah, so. I, I want to get another set, but the set that I had, it was they were, I don't know, something about them. Just flat tire city. <laughs> <laughs> I had them fully refinished. Are those the ones that are on the car now? No, I have some new speed wheels on there now. Oh, all right. Which I'm not uh, not the biggest fan of. I mean, they're all right. They're, they'll work in a pinch. They're super light, though, right? Aren't they super, supposed to be super functional and light? They're supposed to be like... Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're they're pretty light. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, I, the CHs are just, like, they're timeless. But... Um, I'm kind of scared to get another set, but mm. I'm just trying to find like that right wheel that mm. will, uh, you know, fit the bill. I'm super picky on wheels. Man, so. those CHs look so good. So were those 19s? Are they the yep. CHO02s or something like that? They're 09s. 09. Nice, dude. Square set? 009. 009. Yeah, 19 by 8.5, DT35. 
Those are so gangster. I actually think I, no, I had a set of the 18s. I think those were the 002s and an 18 by eight and a half on my Mark VI TDI wagon. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I love CHs, dude. So when I saw pictures on your Instagram on like your golf R on CHs, I was like, yes, <laughs> that's exactly what I would do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it sucked because I was like, I didn't have wheels because my parents, like, I talked them into getting a Mark VI uh, sport wagon years ago, mm -hmm. and then they had a 2.51. Then I'm like, <clears throat> you should get the TDI. Then they got they traded that to get the TDI. Nice. And then that was a diesel gate car. Mm. And then uh, my mom was super bummed. But, you know. I think you said she cars, should. I they think were was... offering more than they were buying yeah. it or what they bought it for. That's why I ended up they getting one. Of... They bought what... it brand new and then drove it for four years and then pretty much walked away with driving it for free. Yeah. I, I mean, that's the only reason why I got rid of mine. Because I loved, I loved my JSW, Mark 6 TDI Sport Wagon. Loved it. But what I was able, I actually made money on it. I sold it back to Volkswagen, and they, like, I literally got paid to drive it for two years. <laughs> yeah. The so. funny thing is, is I found that same car for sale, and I just barely missed it. Oh. Like, I found it. And it was gone within like two hours. Man, I was I, so bummed. I don't see I, them pop up in our marketplace or much where I'm at. I've actually been looking for them because I would love to get like a cheap one, and like yeah. rip rip it out for a swap or something like that. Like one of my Mark Ones would be sick with a one nine TDI in it. That would be dope. Yes, dude. So you currently have the Golf R still not on CHS. Kind of disappointed about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, any other like mods or anything? What 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 are you running for suspension? I have uh, VW Racing uh, the uh, dampening adjustable coils. Oh, That's what sick. came on it. Nice. Uh, they're they're all right. I want to upgrade from that, but uh, I'm not quite sure what direction I want to go. So no I had PSS tens on the first one and I loved mm, those. Yeah. But they didn't go very low. No, no, they don't so, go low. I had a set on my uh, Mark IV R thirty two for a little while as well. Yeah. Yeah. If you saw any of the, the pictures with the gold wheels on the white ones, those were like mm. H and R uh, ultra lows. So mm -hmm. those would go as low as you wanted to go, but I wanted more uh, like track focused stuff and the PSS tens were awesome, mm -hmm. but they didn't go very low. Yeah, I had the PSS nines on my Mark IV R32, and they didn't go low at all. So, had to get rid of them. Had to be low. I think I sold them, and that's when <laughs> I got. That's I sold them, and I think that's how I had a. I had some of the funds to eventually get the air ride on that car. Yeah. Do you have any? Uh, so no crazy stories with the n the newest Golf R. Like that thing is not cursed, right? Or have you had... Uh, I mean, aside from flat tires, nothing too crazy. Okay. Because if you uh, did, I was going to start blaming you and not the cars. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I did. So with the Pacific Waterland thing, I don't know if you've gone to it at yeah, all. Yeah, I've been to it a couple times. You have? Mm -hmm. So they do that show queen drag or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they, you know, you get one chance to do a hit and the fastest one... You know, wins money. Of mm -hmm. course, a, you know, stage two R is not going to win that probably, but, you know, it's fun to go. Yeah. So I did a little test hit on the street nice. <clears throat> and smoked the clutch. And uh. Uh, so I put a new clutch in it, but uh, it's got like a, a little bit of engagement issues. So I got to mm. yank the trans back out of it. But mm. other than that, there's no real issues. Did you get to do the hit? I always forget. Is that an eighth mile? No, or it rained mile? out. Oh, it rained okay. out that year and gotcha. the clutch like my first golf R, like the clutch would slip a little bit here and there and then mm. i'd baby baby it and it'd be fine yeah but that one i i did a test hit and it slipped and it kept slipping oh shit so it, i had to replace it time to do some digging so yeah, yeah. i always forget if that <laughs> yeah. track, that track's a full quarter mile right the woodburn yeah. track trip yeah, okay. yeah there's some quick volkswagens 
that run that day. Yeah. I think the last, because last year's was canceled. So I went to the year before that. It was just 2019. And I went to 2018. And then I went a couple times, like, way, I think it was, like, 2012, 2015, maybe. I can't remember that far back. But, uh, dude, I was seeing, like, sub-10 second front-wheel drive Volkswagens for the first time in my life. I was like, what is oh, going yeah. on? Yeah, there's some, there's some <laughs> super fast cars out there. Dude, my, uh, insane. My buddy Aaron, he has a Audi Coupe Quattro as well. It hasn't wow. been, well, it's it's back up and running now, but he had a... a I think I saw that uh, one at... Uh, at that show uh, in 2019, was he there in 2019? Because there was an Audi Coupe Quattro. Uh, he's was... there pretty much every year. Dude, uh, it now was... it's got a turbo LS. Was he running like high really eights dry. in that thing? Do you can you remember? Uh, that thing was fucking smoking probably, everything. Probably something around there. I don't I don't remember what he's been running in that, but that was kind of his goal. Was like nine. In mm-hmm. that, with the with the turbo uh, LS, because mm-hmm. he he had turbo a, LS a rear wheel drive. turbo. Jesus. What's that? I said turbo LS rear wheel drive. Wow. Yeah. Well, it, initially it was a, a twenty valve turbo mm-hmm. with a with a two liter bottom end with a big turbo, and he was going through transmissions and engines and stuff because mm-hmm. like you just have shifting problems and a yeah, money shift that and power down blow it up and he mm-hmm. was just having all sorts of issues and yep. eventually he's like enough's enough i'm building a tube chassis car so he's Sick. he's got another uh coupe quattro that he's doing a tube chassis and he he just got that running like last week Dude. and it's been like a five-year build that, mm-hmm. that one's he's shooting for like 750s badass um that is gangster but yeah so he he made the other one just a turbo ls like cheap fun car Mm -hmm. just for the time being while he built the other one man that's crazy yeah i think i saw him running in 2019 i think he was like he had to have been the fastest car on the track that year uh maybe i mean there i don't know if the the thing's still out there but there's a a turbo vr caddy with the engine in the back mm. for the power glide and that thing runs like low eight i think Shit. i think i would have known if i saw that it's like lime green kind of yellowy Fuck, color is that there man why can't i remember 2019 it's uh, been around forever. i remember a coupe it's a coupe, got faster and faster and faster uh, over the years i remember a coupe quattro tearing up the track for sure i don't remember that caddy though but i could just be I don't know. I've had a lot of be- I've had a lot show, of beers so since then. <laughs> yeah, I always work the show. I always do uh, pictures for mm. Pacific Water Island, so I don't don't typically make it over the drag area too much. Yeah, we sat and watched a but. decent amount of that. I was there with a the buddy, but I that year I specifically went for the swap meet. I was like, there's like parts that I needed. I had a whole parts list. I was had a ma- what did I have at the time? I think I was doing a, a, a ABA swap. And a Mark One Caddy. And I think I had another something else at the time, and I was like, parts list. I'm I'm going here to go to the swap. I need these parts. Didn't find any of it. <laughs> it was like the year before I went. It was like I was seeing all kinds of shit, and was like, fuck. There's so much cool stuff yeah. here. And then for some reason, 2019 when I went, there wasn't really like that much stuff I was looking for. I was kind of bummed. Yeah, it's hit or miss sometimes. Mm-hmm. I mean, I I know a few guys that are always. You know, slinging Mark One parts, but well, send them my way, dude. I don't dude. know if uh, <laughs> I don't know if they were there that year or not. I don't know. Let's hmm. get into the cross hall cruise, and I've said it a million times to myself, so I remember the name of it. Because <laughs> for some reason, I was having issues. Like, dude, there's like this huge cruise going on. I can't remember what yeah. the name of it was. My neighbor's Tyler. He has that body dropped. <clears throat> Mark one on those wire mm-hmm. wheels. Yeah, I know Tyler. Yeah, so he was like, you got to go, you got to come. It's super cool, it's super cool. Couldn't make it this year. I had already had some other plans. I really wanted to go. I actually had a buddy come into town, and we were thinking about it. By the time he flew into town and we drove out there, it would have been, you know what I mean? It, w- it wouldn't have been yeah. any fun for us. So that was kind of a bummer. Definitely plan on going next year for sure. 
but you are the actual creator of the cruise, correct? I am. And I had you just told me, told me before we got on the podcast that you started it in 2005? Yep. Dude, that is, that's pretty, that's a pretty good run. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. how, how did that all get started? And then I'll just kind of like. Uh, so, uh, back, you know, when I first started getting into cars, mm-hmm. uh, you know, there was VW Vortex and there's J Welty, which became VW Fix, which that mm-hmm. was like the site that I was on most. Cause at the time the Vortex, at least I had heard had a bad reputation for people being assholes and stuff, which mm-hmm. now I'm one of those assholes. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, so I ran through that uh, website and then got on VW Vortex. You know, go to Water Wagons up in uh, Auburn, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Kent, Spring Meet, and all that stuff. Eventually, I met some people, but there was just like no meets in the area. So I was doing monthly VW get togethers in the discount import uh, parts parking lot mm-hmm. off uh, Hall kind of by the the mall over here in beaverton Mm -hmm. which unfortunately they well they had two locations and they closed that one which Mm. kind of sucks that was my my uh, local parts shop but uh but we were doing get-togethers there and we were getting like 100 car turnouts which was big at the time yeah that's pretty good um and then uh Someone who I didn't know at the time was a good friend of mine now, uh, Brett Kirk, on Vortex. He's like, why don't you guys do something cool instead of just sitting in a parking lot? I was like, all right, well, I guess let's uh, let's do something different. And uh, I was trying to think of, like, a cruise out to the beach. And at the time, you know, there's a, a restaurant uh, halfway to the – well, it's – like three quarters of the way to the beach mm-hmm. called Camp 18. It's mile marker 18 from Seaside. Mm. And uh, cruised there, got food, and then shot to Seaside and and did our thing. And it was called Camp 18 Cruise for the uh, first five years or so. Mm-hmm. And we outgrew that place. Mm. Um, basically, we're just taking over their parking lot. And I was trying to work with the the lady that rent, runs the, the place, see mm-hmm. if we could get like half the parking lot section up to us. And mm-hmm. she wasn't willing. Wasn't so having it. We had to find a different thing. And then <clears throat> like at the time, like I had my buddies making uh, my, my artwork for the stickers and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if I, no, I don't have any, but there were like a saw blade and a gear like mixed together mm-hmm. so it's kind of like you know you're driving through a bunch of trees and stuff so mm-hmm. i was trying to think of something that started with a c that was kind of logging related and that mm. was a cross hall was <clears throat> one of the uh pieces of equipment i guess nice so that's kind of where the cross hall thing came from and when you started but, it uh, was it was it like all makes was it originally uh, I mean, kind of euro it was basically just Volkswagens just because that was like a group Mm -hmm. of people that I knew Mm -hmm. and then slowly it kind of expanded a little bit but it's kind of it's kind of more just Volkswagen Audi again just because Mm -hmm. I don't really try to pedal it as hard as I used to Mm -hmm. um you know early on I was like you know I had lots of exuberance uh trying to like get it all structured sponsors the whole nine and then I had one year where I just dropped all this money on shirts and had raffle items, this, that, and the other. Mm -hmm. And then uh, it was the first year that we didn't do it at Camp 18, Mm -hmm. and it rained. And I was like, had everything open to get ready to, you know, sell stuff to people, and everybody just dipped. And I was like, all right, well, I guess that stuff's not important to people. So I've kind of reeled Mm. it back as far as like the complexity of Mm -hmm. the event and just made it more simple Mm -hmm. and you know let people kind of do what they want whenever they get to seaside Mm. i mean there's always like a a uh, bonfire at the 
at the beach that most people end up congregating at. But, nice. you know, nothing's forced. I try to, you know, have it be relaxed. Mm -hmm. No, and, no uh, itinerary. I feel like it's just it's just a cruise to the cruise to the coast. Yeah, <clears throat> and it and I feel like that's it's been pretty successful. Uh, you know, going that way. Mm -hmm. I, I feel oh, I don't usually get to count the cars because I'm always stuck like Doing you know selling stuff. the stickers and stuff because I don't have volunteers or anything. I just mm -hmm. do it all myself. Yeah. Um, because it just got it was it was out of hand whenever it was. A bunch of people yeah you just end up de like myself. you try to delegate and then people are just coming to you with stuff yeah and you're like, i just might as well know, do it I myself try to do a, yeah, yeah i try to do a <laughs> driver's meeting and then mm -hmm. uh half the time someone has to pee and they go to the the gas station to go pee and then everybody bails so mm -hmm. <laughs> sometimes i don't even get to do that i didn't get to do it this year mm -hmm. but uh the driver you know, meeting is just like hey everybody this is a cruise not a race Exactly. Don't trying. drive like a dick. We're yeah. driving through like little towns and stuff. Like I've changed up the route up. a few times since mm -hmm. uh, since it started. Okay. Uh, we go up Highway 30 and down through Astoria down to Seaside to make it longer. Because okay. before it was like 60 miles or something like that. Mm -hmm. And now it's like 160 or something like that. Mm. Yeah, I looked at one of the things too. I was like, oh, I want to take one of my Mark 1s. And I kind of looked at it. I'm in Bend. So me to get from bend to the starting yeah, point is already hours. a little bit of a trek i'm like oh. right. i looked at the drive i was like god don't know if i'm gonna be able to make that this year in anything that i own but i'm going yeah, that's to what, that's what tyler was saying he came up for for that and he's like i wanted to do your driver to see if i could make it to leavenworth or not yeah yeah i think he towed the rabbit out there right me yeah. tow it out there and then just kind of cruise it around. I saw some really cool pictures of the event, of the drive. It looked like there was a lot of cool cars there. I saw what I really was stoked about was, like, all the pictures I was seeing of these lowered Volkswagens, like, on the beach. <laughs> yeah. Like, literally on the beach. Dude's getting stuck. I was like, yes, I wish I was there for all yeah. of that. <laughs> yeah. Tyler yeah. got a speeding Tyler ticket. Tyler got out there. And then, uh, I don't know, did, there's a guy named David Aronson. I don't know if you've know who he is but he's got a mark one that you should probably just get him on the podcast because he's Hook built cool shit. but he's got a mark <laughs> one rabbit on a bug frame with a bug engine oh sick is it orange right hand drive and it's got a turbo on it oh, fuck dude i think i saw that guy at uh i think i saw him at pacific waterlands in 2019 yeah yeah that thing he's, was sick he's built he's built a couple he's got a uh he built a Scirocco what? on a bug frame for somebody that one's like a gold color and then he's yeah, building a, a mark one jetta i don't know if this one's on a bug pan but he said he's putting a honda j series in the front nice, making dude. it rear wheel drive sick that yeah that dude's built some cool shit let him get him on the cast just hit, hit me up, up with his deets or send him my way yeah. and i'll be like let's talk about your volkswagen builds dude <laughs> yeah, I gotta, I gotta send some, some people your way. Maybe Joey Marstall from Double J Motorworks. Rad. If, if anyone else watches this, hit him up. Yeah. I mean, he's a buddy of mine too. But rad. Maybe if we pester him enough, because he's the guy that started Pacific Waterland. Oh, also sick. Also in 2005. Nice. Yeah, I so definitely want to chat. They've been doing it a while. Guy. Yeah, dude. Um, have, have you noticed any? Like, did you have, you know, like any issues i mean you've been doing the the drive for a while now have you had any issues in the past with like things kind of going south and things getting kind of crazy as far as like the actual cruise or events concerned um i mean we've had you know our little bits of drama here and there but mm -hmm. for the most part it hasn't been anything too crazy okay um I mean, there's been people that have, like, gotten a wreck or something, but it was, like, Oof. nothing too serious, mm -hmm. um, thankfully. But yeah. uh, overall, it's, you know, nothing nothing horrible. I mean, there's shenanigans, of course, mm -hmm. but... Um, Has to be had, within reason. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, nothing, nothing terrible. Have you noticed, like, kind of a change in, like, the scene... From when you started it, like up to this point, 
You know what I mean? Like, is there? Oh being, yeah, definitely. What's that? Yeah. What's, it's kind of like seeing like, I mean, I guess if it's always been kind of like a Volkswagen Euro event, because you know what happens is like these things like H2OI, right? Where they start out as like Volkswagen yeah. Audi and then they turn into kind of like a clusterfuck of everything and then it just all goes to shit, right? And then... Yeah, thankfully that hasn't happened to, to cross all, mm -hmm. but like the Leavenworth Drive, it's happened there for sure mm -hmm. or is happening, um, but not not so much with mine. I mean, it's it's smaller than that it's only like 250 cars instead of a mm. thousand like right. leavenworth mm -hmm. um i mean like there's not even really a leavenworth drive anymore i don't think mm -hmm. it's just people show up to town but uh yeah uh hasn't really invaded uh that cruise um early on i was on a another car forum that had like subarus and uh, evos and mm -hmm. skylines and stuff so i ha i had some of those guys come on the cruise mm -hmm. one year but um for the most part it's been either vw audi bmw any euro really when people hit me up and like hey can i take my car mm -hmm. like uh if it's euro yeah bring it but nice. i i try to I don't tell people no because i don't want to be a dick but right. uh i you're, you're highly encourage it, it to yeah, be you're, you're euro to, yeah, variety you're trying to curate a specific cruise for a specific right. set of makes mostly euro so that should be understandable yeah people. yeah i want it to be that that experience you know the first year in 2005 how many cars did you have on the cruise uh i think it was about 70 wow it was That's a pretty actually good a lot. like i said it, it well it like i said it it went from, the, from the those get-togethers gotcha. that were like a hundred plus cars gotcha so i was able to kind of build that up because mm. when i first started those get-togethers it was like i think the first one was like 15 cars or something like that and mm. then it built up over time nice so i i kind of had built a base mm -hmm. before you so actually i got started doing the you know stuff. a good portion of those people to come nice dude that's awesome i'm super stoked on getting to it hopefully you're gonna have it next year i assume right yeah rad so yeah. i'm definitely putting that on my calendar to make it out to i was super bummed i couldn't make it uh this year i really wanted to go but yeah yeah like, we didn't do it last year obviously yeah. and then this year was kind of like iffy just because things were kind of like mm -hmm. you know even though know you're doing a cruise like last year with all the COVID stuff, even though you were doing a cruise, did you decide just not to do it? Like, just as like, you know, like, even though like, I mean, everyone's in their cars and they're cruising and you're going to the beach. Everyone's kind of like, it was it just a decision just like, no, nah, we should just probably chill this year because everything's kind of crazy. I thought it would just be better to be safe because mm -hmm. I didn't want to be responsible for gotcha. someone passing. And actually the day before, this year i had a good friend uh he's actually a volkswagen guy he passed from COVID. oh man so, that sucks <clears throat> which dude. you you were saying that you're a mark four guy so you may know him okay uh did you know austin staunton Shit. he was kamikaze on vortex he had a emola yellow 20th dude the name and the out car of Chicago. the name in the car sounds familiar he always called it the duck. Yeah, what kind of wheels but was he on? Was he bagged? Anything he like that? He had... What did he have? I think he had... Did he have image wheels? Or maybe that okay. was Travi. I forget. Yeah, I think Travi had the images. I don't remember. Man, but, that's a bummer, though, he dude. He moved out to Portland for, like, six years before he moved back. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah. Shit. Well, that sucks, dude. Sorry to hear that. It's a bummer. Yeah. Well, so. I see you're wearing a DCI shirt. Haven't yep. seen that in a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, even though it originated out of Portland, it's... The I Portland, didn't know that. Uh, I thought it originated on the East Coast. I would always see, no. like, DCI East on everyone's, like... Not everyone's, but, like, that's, the dude's I think Vortex that's tags. Yeah. yeah. Those guys I mean, I've only hard. been DCI official for a handful of years now. Mm -hmm. Uh I was in a car club way back in the day, like when I was 
you know, 20. Mm-hmm. And after that whole thing went south, I was like, fuck car clubs. Mm. Not not in, into they it at are, all. They and are then, a lot of drama, aren't they? Like, they, uh, they all start for, off. For most of them, yeah. Yeah, they all and start then, off super fun, and it's just like homies hanging out. And then once it becomes like an official car club, because I had the same thing. I had a car club with a bunch of homies, and then it just like... Man, it turned into a bunch of drama and work and, like, just, like, ugh. It wasn't, like, what yeah. we started, you know what I mean, the, right. the car club to be. Yeah. And then, you know, going up to car shows back in the day, you know, I'd always end up hanging out with this group of guys up in Tacoma. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they're all into DCI. So I always said that, you know, if I was to join any car club, it'd be DCI. Nice. And, uh whenever I had my daughter uh, for the uh, baby shower, they're like, you're in. I'm like, all right, sweet. <laughs> I've been kind of in for like eight years, but whatever. Just kind of non-official, just hanging out with everybody. But, um, That's but right. yeah, uh, I, I believe it did start in Portland, but there's Dude. just not really anyone around. Because I, I always thought Mark 1 Madness was like synonymous with like, DCI, and that's like on the East Coast. So for some yeah, reason, that's where I it's thought it's heavy originated. out there. Yeah, but I did not but know that it was it originated out west. That's that's pretty dope. I know there was yeah. like chapters. Every, I remember it being a big deal, you know, well, back in the yeah, Vortex I, days. Like coming up, you know, young, there was like DCI dudes in Europe and stuff. Mm-hmm. I don't know if there still are because our little DCI group. Um, I don't think I see anyone in Europe in there mm. anymore. But I remember um, they had like a I web page and everything. Are they? Do you still have? I mean, is it like a Facebook group now? Members only? Like yeah, it's just a Facebook group. Mm, you guys are just but, underground. <laughs> yeah, kind of low key. It's I mean mostly East Coast now. Mm-hmm. I was tasked with the with the responsibility to revive Portland, but nice. I mean. There's already a, a car club in the area that a lot of people are already in, so it's mm. like... Like Euro? Yeah, it's the uh, Columbia County Euro. Mm. Never even heard of it. <laughs> or CCE, maybe you heard of it. I don't know, oh. but uh, a lot of the people are in that, so... Okay. Not, I don't really want to like try to pillage people from that. I mean... Mm. Well, I'm a free maybe. agent, dude. I'll throw a DCI yeah. sticker on one of my clapped out Mark ones. <laughs> we'll talk to the homies. Uh, well, at least I have some of them on the podcast, dude. That'd be rad. I'd like to talk about yeah. like the whole history of that because I remember I was a Mark IV guy back in like the Vortex heydays, but I would definitely like, I love Mark ones and Mark. I've, l- I've always loved Mark ones and Mark two. So I'd always be in like the Mark one yeah. forms or the Mark two forms. And I would see like every other post would be like a DCI signature tag. I always remember seeing, yeah. like, DCI East, and I would always look at, like, you know, the Mark One Madness stuff, and that seemed like it was very synonymous with DCI. Um, so, yeah, like, you know, it would be cool to get some kind of history on that, but I thought it was dope when you were wearing that throw, uh, shirt, a little throwback, but apparently you guys are still around doing things, which is even more dope. <laughs> you know, yeah, we're still around. Uh we need to start reviving some of the, the barbecues and events that we used to do. That's awesome, man. Sweet. So I wanted to play. I had uh, a buddy, Aaron, on the podcast, Aaron Staley, and he kind of started this game thing. So I was like kind of thinking to myself, like, how can I work a game into the show or the podcast and kind of make it fun? So I figured we'd go over some like controversial topics within our scene and I throw them at you and see where you're at on the side of the fence. And maybe <laughs> maybe that'll come of something. Maybe it'll be a complete failure. <laughs> Either way, <laughs> hopefully it's entertaining to people who listen yeah, to this podcast. <laughs> All right, you ready? Yep. Square or rounds? Definitely rounds. Rounds. Are you up for swapping squares to rounds? <laughs> Yeah, I did. Nice. <laughs> All right. I prefer uh, the quad rounds. On okay. My cars nice. Over yeah, the little, singles. Little but, I mean, I had singles on my car, 
but I never did do the quads because I got rally lights. Mm, the rally lights are like dope taping squares. Headlights or taping flashlights to your hood, they're terrible. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, air ride or static? Uh, well, I guess it depends on your objective, but I'm not the slamming on its nuts kind of guy, mm. so it's static for me. Static for you. You're about that functional low. All right. Yeah, if I like you, handling. If you had to pick between one, Mark One or Mark Fours? Huh. Probably Mark Ones. Nice. All right. And then this last one here has nothing to do with cars. Beer or whiskey? <laughs> Beer for sure. My brother's a brewer in uh, Scottsdale. Nice. For what brewery? Uh, Goldwater Brewing. Oh, sweet. Never heard of him. I got to check him out. I used to be yeah, a huge, a head brewer there. huge beer nerd myself. Um, I like, I'm, I'm kind of digging on the whiskeys nowadays. I'm not going to lie. There's a lot, there's a lot of dope craft whiskey out there now. Yeah. Me and, me and hard alcohol don't mix as well as I <laughs> used to. Touche. Uh, well that was the game. I mean, it kind of worked. Yeah. Kind of didn't. I could have put more on there, but. You kind of surprised me. You, well, like I was like trying to figure it out. I was like, I'm gonna play this game with Brian, and then you like hopped on the, the podcast thing. I was like, oh, let's get started. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's rad. So uh, for the cruise, um, is it typically like the same weekend every year? So like next year, is it already like kind of planned out? Is it like an automated thing for you at this point now? Like. What yeah, do do it's to... usually the first Saturday in May. I moved it back this year just because of the uncertainty of things kind of mm -hmm. opening up. Mm -hmm. So I moved it back, um, which kind of sucked because my buddy Matt up in Tacoma, he does a cruise up to Port Angeles, mm -hmm. and we both ended up doing it on the same day. So we mm -hmm. kind of kind of screwed each other <laughs> mm. but you have we a didn't lot of... know we, we literally announced it within like an hour of each other oh that's hilarious do and, you uh, usually have a lot yeah. of washington people come down for that cruise uh yeah mm, i guess that's right yeah i've had people from sac i've had people nice. from Northern idaho Rad. i think i've had can uh, canadians um I'm trying to think of the furthest person uh, well, I had someone from Texas come, nice. but he, he used to live in Portland, so uh, okay. he just did came he, back to hang out. But. Did he drive all the way from Texas, though, to do the cruise? Or did he like, fly uh, in, ride with the I, homie? I don't think so. I think he flew in. Mm. I'm going to try to get a bunch of uh, homies with me from NorCal to do it next year. That'd be cool. A, a huge Mark One crew. I'm going to try to. Anyway. Yeah, I remember you talking that you were homies with Kevin. Yeah! I, hung out with him so Euro cool image Kev. Him. everyone knows him he's like the common link to everybody <laughs> <laughs> yeah kevin yeah, you need to did. come on and do this podcast already dude he wants to do yeah, it in man. person he keeps ducking me or he's too shy I yeah he, he dated someone up here so that's how i met him ah I'm not gonna drop names but <clears throat> just drop those names dude <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking, dude. Well, dude, that was, like, awesome having you uh, on the podcast and talk about your, your Volkswagen history and, and the cruise. The cruise is something I'm really stoked uh, on, especially being in the area now, so it's definitely something I, I want to check out. Um, so I'm definitely down for next year. Is there any anyone you want to shout out, anyone you want to kind of give props to? Uh, I don't know about shouting out, but I'd, <laughs> I'd definitely like to see – uh, Joey Marcel on here, uh, maybe Sean Walsh. I don't know if we can get him to come out of his rabbit hole of Harley's now, but uh, yeah, just I'd like to see some of the old school guys. Maybe Jason Ondel. He's a, a DCI guy from Tacoma, nice. but he's been around. He's got some interesting stories. Awesome, dude! Send him my way. Send them, you know, a link to the podcast, send them my information, man. I'm, I just, like I said with this thing, as I've been talking with other people, I just want to, I just want to talk about Volkswagens and the culture and the lifestyle with, with whoever yeah. has anything cool to talk about. So send yeah, them my way, man. Sam, we're, yeah, we're Sam Dobbins, but. Dobbs. I don't, 
I think I met. I don't know that where guy. he's at anymore. Is he down in California or Florida? I I'm not sure. I, I follow him on Instagram. I met him, I think, in like '08 or '09, very briefly at one of the Water Wagons shows. Yeah. Um. Uh. I don't think he was like the Sam Dobbins back then, though. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Not really. I remember hanging out with him back when he was this like the shy, quiet kid that mm-hmm. didn't. Uh, I don't know. He was just in the Mark II forums, which is how I knew him. And then, uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, dude. I'll, I'll... John Walsh, the guy that I name drop, was kind of his, like, mentor in photography. And then just he mm. just started crushing it. Nice. Yeah, definitely. Now I'll talk to all those all those homies. So if you, um, you know, if you got, you got a line, just drop them my way and we'll have them on. But... I want to thank oh, you yeah. for coming on and chatting. That was super rad. So I appreciate it. And, uh, dude, we'll do it again. And I'm super stoked to, to check out the cruise next year. Yeah, man. <laughs> good All to right, have you Brian. Out. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. All right, man. Bye. Later.